What do we know about negative exponents? What do they do? Flip it. Flip it. So this is going to become 5 thirds to the second. And when you have a fraction to a power, you just do the power to both parts of the fraction. So 5 squared, 3 squared. Any question about that problem? Everybody okay with that one? All right, next. Now this does not have a negative, so don't be doing any flipping, but what do we know about fractional exponents? What do they mean? Uh-oh, we're in trouble on Monday's quiz if we can't answer that question. Fractional exponents. Uh, what's square root? Yeah, fractional exponents mean you have a radical. And this thing goes under the radical. And then the fraction, the denominator tells you which root you're taking, the numerator tells you which power you're taking. So we need to take the square root of 16, which is four, and the square root of nine, which is three. And since that's just a one, you don't even need to worry about it. Anything to the first power is just itself. Any question about that one? All right, now we got a problem here. This one has a negative exponent. So the original number is 100 over 1. So that negative is going to flip it to 1 over 100. So the negative exponent flips your fraction. William, you paying attention? You sure? Okay. Now, the radical, or the, the fractional exponent tells me I have a radical. Underneath goes 1 over 100. Square root, cubed. Square root, cubed. So what's the square root of 1? 1. Yep, good job. What's the square root of 100? 10. Perfect. Now we're going to cube that. So we have 1 cubed, which is, of course, 1. And then we have 10 cubed, which means 10 times 10 times 10, or 1,000. You will not have a calculator for this quiz. So it is important that you know how to do these evaluations on your own. All right, three more here. Quiz will have five problems just like these. All right, we have eight twenty-sevenths to the two-thirds. 5 times 4 to the negative second, and 5 eighths squared. No negative, please don't flip, but there is a fraction, fractional exponent. A fractional exponent automatically means a radical. Under it will be 8 27ths. The denominator tells me which root I'm taking. The numerator tells me which power I'm taking. So here we go. No calculator. We gotta know that the cube root of A is what? Two. And the cube root of 27 is? Three. Yes. And then we're gonna square that. So we 2 squared and 3 squared. So our final answer is simply 4 ninths. Okay? Now, please do not ever 
multiply these two numbers together. You can never combine these if one has an exponent and the other one doesn't, okay? So let's deal with the exponent first, PEMDAS. So this is five times what? How do I handle four to the negative second? What does that become? Do you make it one over four? You do, perfect. And then of course you still have to square it, but you make it one over four. That is exactly right. The negative flips it. In the original problem, it's four over one, so it flips to one over four. Now, still don't combine them. Now you gotta work this out. One squared, four squared. Now you are multiplying five over one times one over 16. When we multiply, we go straight across so five times one is five, and one times 16 is 16. Now, I want you guys to pay attention to how many steps this is taking me. I'm not saying that you have to write down everything I write down, but if you are at all confused, go step by step. Don't try to do too much at once. Now, this one you can do all at once because there is nothing to fix. There's no negative exponent, there's no fractional exponent. So we're just gonna do what it says. We're gonna do five squared and eight squared. And that's it for that one. Does anybody have a question about these three? We have two more to go. Here we go. A nine fourths to the negative one half and one half times two cubed. Okay. Who can tell me how to start the first problem there? Nine fourths to the negative one half. What do I need to do first? Got you, Mr. Ford. Thank you. So you're going to flip it. Bingo, stop right there, I'll let you jump back in. Right. But yep, step one, we're gonna flip it. So it becomes four ninths to the one half. All right, now what, Gabe? And then uh, you're gonna put it in a square root. Because fractional exponents always mean a radical. This one actually is a square root. They're not always square roots. It depends what the denominator is, but this one is a square root. So now I'll do the square root of each piece. Square root of- 16 and 81. Oh, be careful, we're square rooting. We're not squaring, we're square rooting. What's the square root of four? Two, and the square root of three is nine, yeah. Now that's to the first power, which doesn't really change anything. So our answer is just two thirds. Yeah, be real careful. This is different than this. This would be 16 over 81. You see the difference? All right, last one. Am I gonna take one half times two and cancel those out? Never, ever, ever, ever. So what am I gonna do first? Cube um, two. Exactly, thank you, you're on fire today, good job. William, I need your camera on, there we go. So I'm gonna cube two, and I know two cubed is eight. If I don't have that memorized, I'll do two times two times two. I am not gonna have a calculator. Now, this is a multiplication problem, so I'll think of that as eight over one. And now I'll multiply straight across. One times eight, two times one. Now that does reduce, and you always wanna reduce your final answer. So if by chance you get one that reduces, please reduce it. I got a question this morning. Yes. So, 
Okay. All right, so on Monday, we're going to have a quiz. And it's gonna have five problems on it, just like these. Okay, no calculator. Sometime between now and Monday, if you're so inclined, go into the chapter three uh, Schoology folder, extra practice, and you will find these problems all laid out on a paper. You can print that paper or copy that paper or something and work through it just like it's a quiz. You know the answers there on, that, on the work you're doing now, so you can check to make sure you got it. Okay, everyone? All right, let's get back to our notes then. We have to finish up section 3.2 today. So according to my records, we're on the back of page 25 and ready to start problem two. Does that sound about right? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Number two, A, write an exponential function to describe this situation. Now we have done some writing of exponential functions already. So we know that what we're shooting for is this. Can anybody remember one of the very first notes we took in this chapter? We talked about if we had an exponential, and I'm just making this up. We talked about what these numbers meant. Does anybody remember what those numbers mean? What significance they have in the problem? Does anyone remember that? What was this 10 right here? What did we call it? Look at page one of your notes. We call it, that's right, that's called the initial value. So wait a second. In problem 2A, they're telling me that the initial value is four. So can't I just put a four in there for A? Yep, because that number is always the initial value. Okay, then come back over to this, which is just a random example. We talked about this before though. This number is bigger than one. So this is a growth. What is the rate of growth? Does anybody remember? You should be able to look at this and tell me what the rate of growth is. How much more than one is this number? Yeah, it's a 34% growth. That's exactly right. So when I look at this problem, 2A, it says my initial value is four, and I am growing 11%. What number would go in here since I'm growing 11%? 111. Yep, well, 1.11, yep, 1.11. Your rate of growth is how much bigger than one you are. So if you are 11% bigger, you're just going to take 1 and add 11%. So that's the answer to 2A. Did I have to do any math? No. I just have to understand what A and B mean in the equation. All right, let's look at 2B. We're using exactly the same format. What do I put in for A? What's my initial value? 0.36. You don't do anything with it. You write it down. 0.36. Now this one is increasing 22%. So if we are increasing 22%, what am I going to put in here? Point 
1.22. Thank you. I really need some participation, guys. I know you're bored out of your minds. Can't help it. This is important stuff. C. The initial value is 147, but I am decreasing. Decreasing 10% per week. Oh, what? I talked over you, sorry. 0.9. Yes, thank you. 0.9. Remember, the percent decrease is how much less than one you are. So if you are 10% less than one, you're 90%, you're 0.9. Perfect. By the way, the per day, per week, per hour, none of that matters. That will come up in different problems that we do. But in terms of the equation, it doesn't matter. So don't worry about that. Okay, D. I have an initial value of 20.8 and I am decreasing four and a half percent. Okay, can we figure out what goes in this parentheses if we're decreasing four and a half percent? Four and a half percent. Point zero four five. Well, no, that would be point zero four five is the amount of the decrease. But remember, the number that that decrease rate is how much less than one I am. So one minus that is what I need. That's what goes here. So this is going to be 0.955. This number that goes here starts at 1, and then it either goes up by whatever amount or it goes down by whatever amount. If we are decreasing 4.5%, then this number had to be 95.5% because it's 4.5% less than 1. This is the amount less than one. The percentage that they give you is the amount less than one, 100. And one more, E. Uh, 16 thirds, no, don't worry, it's, it's a fraction. Does not make one bit of difference. Times something to the X power. What's going to go in here if I am decreasing 42%? That means I'm 42% less than one. 50, 0.58. 0.58, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now we're going to need those calculators. Because now we're going to do a couple of word problems, but it's very easy and it's exactly what we were just doing. So we're reading the first problem. The population of Calcville was 123,000. It decreases 2.5% or 2 each year. Now let's stop right there and write the equation for Calcville. What was the initial population? A hundred and twenty-three thousand. Initial means beginning or starting. It decreases two point five percent. So it is decreasing point zero two five. So what number has to go into this parentheses? Please don't put 0.025, that is not right. What goes in there? 0.975. Mm -hmm. 0.975. A number less than one in this spot indicates a decay or losing value. 
the amount that it's less than one is how fast it's losing value. So this is losing value two and a half percent. Now, let's answer the question. What will the population be in 2010? Now remember, this was the population in 2000. So we are going to wait 10 years, right? Everybody gets that, 10 years? Any idea whether I put the 10 here or the 10 here? What's your thought on it? Exactly, always. Your time goes in the X, always. Very good. So then I'll just get out my calculator and I will type this in. So one, two, three, oh, 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 times 0.975 raised to the tenth. Remember, this is the button that you use to raise. And this is population, so please don't put a decimal on it. We're going to say, rounding off to the nearest whole person, would be 95,489. So while it's a word problem, really, it's just exactly like all of the other ones that we did. Everybody get 95,000? Okay, let's do one more, same exact thing, only now it's Trigville. So we need to write an equation for what's going on in Trigville, and then we'll answer the question. What are we going to put in for our initial value for our A? 9,876. Yep. And then this one is increasing 12% a year. So we're increasing 12%. So that means... We're going to add on 12%. So what's going to go in here? One point? One, two. Yep. Now, this initial population was in 2005, and we want to know what's the population in 2013. So we're going to let X be what? How many years are we waiting? Seven. Six, right? Eight. 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 Five, 13 minus five, that'd be eight years. So we'll go to our calculator, we'll type it in. Nine, eight, seven, six times 1.12 raised to the eighth. Again, round off to the nearest whole person. I got 24,453. So the population is 24,453. All right. All right, here's a piece of good news. Homework 3.2 is due on Monday. So, mark your calendar, due on Monday at 3.10. And now we're going on to page 26, which is a whole bunch of logarithms. This chapter is all about exponential functions and logarithmic functions. So the first two sections, we've been talking about exponents. Um, three, four, and five, we'll talk more about, or we'll do logarithms, and then six, we'll kind of bring it all together in this chapter. 
so uh, which will finish after Christmas. We, we won't get it done next week. But we will get page 26 done today, I think, because these problems are all easy once we talk about them. Okay, so let's look at the first, oh wait, I skipped something, someone. Let's look at the first four. Now, first of all, logarithms, and right now we're just talking about some mechanics. I know you don't fully understand even what a logarithm is, and that's okay. Don't worry about it. Just listen and learn here. So we, because you guys did logarithms last year, but I don't know how much you remember. Logarithms always have a base attached. This one has a base five, this one has a base four. If there is no base attached to an LOG, then it automatically means base 10. These are what we call common logarithms. And the LOG means base 10. So on your calculator, you have an LOG key, and that is a base 10 logarithm. The LOG key will not work on this problem because this is a log base five, and your calculator does not have a log base five button. Notice problem number four. It just says LOG. So I'm gonna put an understood 10 there. You do not have to do that, but certainly as you're beginning your logarithm journey, it might be helpful to stick a base 10 on there. Chase, I don't know where you are. I have to mark you absent if you disappear. The other kind of logarithm is what we call a natural logarithm, and I, I mean the other kind of special logarithm, is a natural logarithm, and it is a log base E and its symbol is LN. So if you have looked at your calculator or if you remember what you did last year, you have an LOG button, that means base 10, and you have an LN button, that means base E. So when I look at problem number three, I'm gonna understand that there is an understood E down there. Now, one of the wonderful properties of logarithms is that if you have the log base n of n to a power, so if you have an expression that is the log base n of that same number to a power, the answer will always be the power. You do not have to do any work. There's no work to do. That is a property. So when I look at problem number one, it says the log base five of five to the first. There's an understood one on that, it's five to the first. My property tells me that when these two numbers match, the answer is the exponent. So the answer to problem one, or A, one I guess, problem, answer to problem one is one. Now, this one is exactly the same, except you have to recognize that 16 is four squared. That's not a mystery, you all know 16 is four squared. I wrote it as four squared so that these two would match and now I can see that the answer is what? What's the answer to number two? It is two. So the answer to number one was one, how cool is that? And now the answer to number two is two. Now, what about the answer to number three? I know it's a natural logarithm, but that doesn't change the property. The base is E. These two match. What is the answer to problem number three? Three. Guys, one more time. 
when you have when you have the log base 7 of 7 to the 5th, the answer is 5 when those two numbers match. So when I have the log base e of e to the 3rd, these two numbers match, so my answer is 3. Now, these two numbers don't match. Can we rewrite a thousand as a power of 10? Is a thousand 10 to some power? I see Dasmond doing something there. Are you telling me the yeah. answer, Dasmond? Three. He says a thousand is 10 cubed. These two numbers match, so the answer to that problem is also three. All right, now we're gonna try some that are a little bit, or some of these are a little bit trickier. Some of these you're gonna to need to use what you know about exponents to help you do the problem. So, what, number five? No. All right, so here we go, number five. These two numbers don't match. So what you have to do is figure out if you can make a match. In other words, can you change 1 into a power of 4? Because if you could, these would cancel and that would be your answer. Well, Certainly 16, you all know that 16 is 4 squared. But that squ 4 squared is in the bottom. So if I need to bring it up so that it's a plain 4, what power would that be? Negative 2. Yes. We're doing backwards what we just did to practice for our quiz. We're changing 1 over 16 into 1 over 4 squared, which is 4 to the negative second. And then you can see that the answer to the problem is negative 2. Now remember, ln is base E. So you would love to have this not be 1 over E cubed, but to have it be E to a power. 1 over E cubed would be E to what power? What power would that be? Exactly. I'm so happy that somebody's paying attention. Thank you very much. That Welcome. is right. So the answer is negative three. Isaac, what's going on, my man? Uh, my iPad just died. Okay. All right. Again, I need these numbers to match. I can't have that cube root thing in there. So I would ideally like to have that be six to a power. I'd like that to be a six to match this so that I could cross those out. This is a cube root. What power is a cube root? Now think about it. What kind of powers give me radicals? This is a radical. 
I need you to change it to a power. How about a one third? What does six to the one third mean? Doesn't that mean the cube root of six? Again, I'm thinking about my exponents kind of backwards from how I did it on my quiz, or will do it on my quiz. So the answer to the problem is one third. So I'm going to, I don't know, I don't know where I can put it, but we already have one property that we kind of have written down, hopefully. And that's the property that says the log base n of n to the p is p. These two numbers match. Your answer is just p every time, every time. Another property I want you to add to that list is this one. I don't care what the base is. If you're taking the logarithm of 1, the answer is 0. So when I look at problem number eight, my answer will be zero. And it will be zero because the log of one is always zero, no matter what the base is. If you took your calculator out and you pressed log one or you pressed ln one, it would say zero. The log, the, um, log of one is always zero no matter the base. So these two things are like rules. They happen, they work all the time. All of the time. So number nine, just gonna do a few more here guys, you gotta hang in there. This would be a doable problem if that were a seven. I need this to be the log base seven of seven to something. Can I do but that? Can't you just, uh, wouldn't it just be a half? No, it'd actually be a two, because 49, isn't 49 seven squared? Yeah. Yeah, so the log base seven of seven squared, the answer will be just two. Notice for problem number 10 that I stuck this in there. I do that to remind myself that LOG has a base. The base for LOG is 10. Now I need this problem to say this. That's what I need it to look like. So I have to somehow change 1 tenth into 10 to a power. That would be a half, right? No. Be careful. A half would be a square root, Gabe. This is 1 over. 1 over means your exponent was negative. So this is a negative 1 because 10 to the negative first means one over 10, doesn't it? So what we got, it, and, and I know it's a lot, but what you've got to keep straight in your mind is one over, like flippy things, are negative exponents. Radicals, if you had a square root, we don't have any up here now, but if you had a square root or a cube root or something, that is a fractional exponent. So the answer to uh, number 10 is negative 1. All right, now see if you can figure this one out. This one's a little bit trickier, a little bit more involved. Your focus, guys, is to make this the log base 3 of 3 to a power. You want these two numbers to match. So you have 1 ninth. How do you change 1 ninth into 3 to a power? 
what power would it be? Negative nine. Not negative nine. It is negative. There's no question about it. You got a Two one over, four. folks. Nine is three squared, right? So that would just be negative two. Somewhere, some of you are, are not making the connection. On the quiz on Monday, you're going to have a problem that looks just like this, okay? This is like one of the ones we practice. The first thing you're going to do with that is flip it and make it this. And then you're going to simplify it and make it one ninth. So what I am asking you to do is exactly the same thing the other direction. Start with the 1 ninth, that's 1 over 3 squared, that's 3 to the negative second. When you have, <coughs> excuse me, a fraction here, your exponent's going to have to be negative because that's how you get fractions. And 9 is 3 squared. So it's negative two. All right, I want to finish this column. So let's do the next, what are there, three more to go? So we have the log of 100, the log base six of six, and the log base seven of the square root of seven. Does anybody want to take a guess at any of these? We don't have to do them in order. Does anybody have a thought about any of them? All right, so uh, number 13, that's one. Exactly. Now, stop, guys. Isn't there an understood one on that six right there? Since these two match, the answer is right there, one. Perfect. Beautiful. All right, anybody got another one? It's 12 one half. Or I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean two. It is two. Very, very good. And the reason it's two, well, first of all, there's a base 10 on that LOG. LOG means base 10. So we have the log base 10. 100 is 10 squared. Remember, I need those to match. And the log base 10 of 10 squared is 2. Perfect. Perfect. Now, what power is a square root, guys? It's a fractional power. What power would it be? 1 half. 1 half. Radicals are fractional exponents. Square roots are one-halves, cube roots are one-thirds, and so on. You have matching numbers, so the answer is one-half. Remember to sometime between now and Monday, get out that practice work and um, you know practice a little more for your quiz on Monday. We have flex today at two o'clock. So if you are interested in doing any other practice or whatever, you can certainly come back then. Otherwise, have a wonderful day, and I will see you, I guess, on Monday. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.